Rust is going to be highly important in the coming years. And I have a diagram here. With the help of this diagram, I'm going to try to convince you to learn Rust. So we'll start with the benefits that Rust provides you. So we have high performance, memory safety, and support for concurrency. This one being a little important because this is the whole reason why uh, languages like Golang are so popular, right? So Golang provides you a lot of concurrency and there are so many languages that don't provide you support for concurrency. And Rust is a language that has a high amount of concurrency built in. You have high performance, like I said, high performance basically it's considered so fast that the people use it for a lot of low level systems. And then you have a lot of packages, just like you have NPM here, you have crates, and you have a lot of packages coming up um, for Rust. You have a great community, which is highly supporting, and you can ask a lot of questions, you'll get easy answers. Uh, so the community is quite engaged, basically. And you have backwards compatibility. So even if the new versions of Rust come out, it's not like everything's going to crash, right? Just like exactly what happened with Angular. When Angular 2 came out, we had a lot of problems with Angular 1. You won't expect the same with Rust. These guys are very professional. You have a lot of stability. Rust is extremely, extremely stable. And you have high security. Now, because of high security, stability, and high performance, performance which is like as good as almost C language, uh, companies like Tor, so Tor is kind of switching their entire code base to Rust. At least that's what I read. And that's because they're, they're citing that High, Rust has higher security than um, C, but almost the same performance and almost the same stability. So that's a big, big, big thing, right? That's a big claim. And if Tor is doing it, um, I can tell you it, a lot of people are going to jump on the bus in the future. And let's look at some other companies that use um, Rust. So you have Discord. Now Discord have written quite a bit about why they use Rust because Rust helps them with a lot of concurrency, with lot, maintaining a lot of concurrent connections. They, are, they use Elixir as well for some parts of their program, but they use Rust major, majorly. Then you have Dropbox, Figma, Cloudflare. Cloudflare also uses a lot of Golang, but they also use Rust for some uh, of their systems. Then you have Mozilla and Coursera. And there are so many more companies, but here you can see these are like really big legit companies with really strong developing developer teams and they're using uh, Rust. So it's a good place to be in. It's not like if you learn Rust, you won't be out of a job or you'll be out of a job. You'll never be out of a job if you know Rust really well because you have some really good companies using Rust. Uh, there are some gaming engines that use Rust. You have Bevy and Amethyst. You can check them out. I'll leave some links uh, in the description box. So what, what you can see here is if, if um, there are gaming engines being built on Rust, you can imagine the uh, performance <laughs> that people are trusting, uh, you know, the, the, the performance of Rust and people are trusting it so much that they're building gaming engines with Rust. Then you have some specialized technology as well. So you have Servo Web Engine and you have, a, you have Starship, which is a terminal prompt, prompt terminal basically. So you have a web engine and a terminal prompt. So, you know, the, the, the gamut of the products that have been built with Rust are huge. And uh, what I want to first show you is why it's important in the future, right? And then we'll come to the OS and frameworks. So why it's important in the future is because, um, and why I really like Rust uh, is because it's going to be very important for Web3. It is very important for Web3 right now, but uh, a little you know into the future as well we'll see more and more projects with web3 that's because blockchains they require a lot of scalability you, if you are into blockchains if you are into web3 you probably know that blockchains have problems with scaling uh, at the moment and a lot of companies are trying to solve it with different ways and a lot of companies are using layer one solutions or layer two solutions to help build uh, either better blockchains or provide um, solutions to scale existing blockchains like ethereum and a lot of layer two solutions are also being built with Rust. A lot of layer one solutions like uh, actual new blockchains are also being built with Rust. Uh, Solana is a, is a great example. Uh, there, are, there are so many more. I'm just sharing one Solana because that's like the, almost everybody has heard about Solana. So it's like I don't want to use any esoteric or any uh, very rare avant-garde kind of examples. All right. And then you have um, Substrate. It's, it's a framework built on um, Rust, which you can use to build blockchains very easily. And again, there are so many more, but I'm just talking about Substrate because it's very, very popular. 
Then you have two very popular Ethereum clients uh, with Rust. So I'm pretty sure almost everybody has ever heard about Lighthouse and Open Ethereum. Uh, you know, you can you can work with uh, Ethereum basically. Just like in Golang, we had Get. Uh, in, here you have Lighthouse and Open Ethereum. Then you have frameworks. Just like in Golang, we have um, Gengonic, we have Fiber, uh, we have um, and so many more Gorilla Max, right? Echo. Here, the frameworks you have are Rocket, Tauri, U, and Active Axtex Web. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about these because uh, we'll actually be building projects using these frameworks. So I don't just like to talk about theory a lot. You know, you know that about me if you've been following my channel till now. We'll build actual projects using these frameworks, uh, but there's right now a, a basics of Rust series going on, and also parallelly we'll be running a series on projects in Rust. That's where you'll see these projects, and this is what I'm preparing you for. And I'm trying to also kind of convince more people to use Rust because uh, because the kind of salaries that you can get with Rust, Rust and Golang, uh, all the technologies that will be used for Web3, like Rust, Golang, Solidity, right? Uh, the kind of salaries that I'm seeing in the market are really, really big. So all of my followers, at least, I'm kind of trying to convince them, hey, use Golang, use Rust, leave all the other old languages that we, you've been using because uh, because I'm really ingrained in the market and I know what's happening. And I know the kind of uh, money peak companies are paying just because they chose to go with Rust and now they're short on Rust developers because not many people are there in the market. Uh, and the kind of money you can make is awesome right now. So please listen to me. Learn Rust, learn Golang, learn Solidity. If possible, learn all three of these. Then, uh, then you have your... Now you have complete operating systems built with Rust. How more legit can a language get? How more legit can a technology get if you have an OS built using Rust, right? So imagine how highly performant it is and how, um, you know, how, how well it is, how good it is for low level systems. Uh, you have Redox and Theseus, two awesome operating systems built with Rust. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a lot. We covered quite a bit. We covered all the uh, top features. We covered uh, you know, the companies that use Rust, we could cover the gaming engines, Web3 frameworks, OS, and some specialized tech with Rust. This should be enough to uh, get you started with Rust. Okay. Um, in the future, you'll see, uh, you know, a little more complicated videos of Rust from my side because we've done the very basics, the first five videos, we've done like the very basics of Rust. Now the complexity will start in, in, in increasing a little bit and you'll, you'll enjoy it but I just want to also show you why you want to, you know, uh, take in so much of efforts to learn trust. <laughs> there, there's a reason for it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in my next video. And if you haven't subscribed, you must subscribe because you get awesome content here. And thank you. Bye.